Great. We are going to review last week's memory verse and last week's song. Then we're going to count off the books of the Bible to Miss Kelly. And then you're actually going to join me again because we're going to go over our new memory verse after Miss Kelly's story and learn a really fun new song. And for this fun new song, you have to stand up and be really silly. But we're going to do that afterwards. All right, so let's review our memory verse. Do y'all remember? Isaiah 43, 1. Very good. How does it start? Fear not. I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Very, very good. All right, one more time. Fear not. For I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Isaiah 43, 1. Man, y'all are doing so good at this. Let's sing last week's song about how much God loves us. I'm all wrapped up. I'm all tied up. I'm all tangled up in Jesus. I'm all wrapped up. I'm all tied up. I'm all tangled up in God. Oh, yeah. I'm all wrapped up. I'm all tied up. I'm all tangled up in Jesus. I'm all wrapped up, tied up, tangled up in God. Oh, yeah. I'm all wrapped up, tied up, tangled up in Jesus. Wrapped up, tied up, tangled up in God. Oh, yeah. Y'all are doing so good. Just all week. Get faster and faster at that song. All right, let's count off the books of the Bible to Miss Kelly, and then I'll join you in a minute. All right, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1 Samuel. That's where our story's from. All right, I'll see y'all in just a few minutes. Good morning, everybody. I hope you're having a great Sunday morning. Um, we are still just trucking along with our um, digital worship and our Sunday school lessons online. And so um, I hope that this video finds you well and happy and healthy. Um, we have been unpacking some really important people in the Old Testament. We've, we've talked about um, Joshua, and we have talked about Hannah, and we talked about Samuel, and now, this morning, we get to find another one of um, God's chosen people to lead his, to lead his people, and um, how important this character is in God's plan, especially as it la is laid out in the Old Testament. Now, what I want to do is I want to kind of back up just a little bit to remind you where we are in the Old Testament. Now, we are still in the book of 1 Samuel, which is the ninth book of the Old Testament. So, 1 Samuel showed us Hannah and how Hannah prayed for a son and how she was blessed with Samuel. And then Samuel went to live with Eli. And last week we learned about how Samuel was called by name by God and how God knows our names too and how he has a plan for us just as he has a plan for Samuel. So this week we find Samuel serving God um, and listening to God and, and God using Samuel in really some very important ways. Now, one part of the story that we have skipped is um, Israel, say Israel, Israel were the people of God. And God had a special plan for Israel, but sometimes Isra the Israelites, they just did what they wanted to do. And they wanted a king. God was going to choose a king for them, but they chose their own king. They chose Saul. Say his name with me. Saul. Saul was tall. Tall Saul. He was mighty. He was strong, but his heart was not good. And so God rejected Saul. Say rejected. That God said Saul should not be the king of Israel. And that God was going to appoint and anoint. Say anoint. Anoint. That means that he was going to have someone put oil on the head of his chosen king. And that way all of Israel would know that this person was chosen by God to be the king of Israel. Now... 
he called on Samuel one day and he said, Samuel, I want you to fill your horn, like a ram's horn, full of oil. And I want you to go to the town of Bethlehem. Now we know how important Bethlehem is to God's purpose. But at that time, Samuel didn't know. And so he said, there is a man there named Jesse. Okay, so let's back up. He told Samuel to fill his horn with oil and to travel to the town of Bethlehem. And there he would find a man named Jesse. Jesse had a lot of sons. And he said that he was supposed to anoint one of Jesse's sons, the one that God told him to anoint. Samuel was a little bit confused, but he followed God's, God's instructions. And so he got a small cow and he went to the town of Bethlehem and he said that he was there to make a sacrifice to God. And he invited Jesse and his sons to the sacrifice. Now, he was waiting for God to tell him who, which one of these sons he was going to anoint. Well, he chose the first son, Eliab. Eliab looked like a king. But God said, Samuel, man looks on the outside. Man looks at the outward appearance. But I see the heart. And so Jesse, the dad, presented the rest of his seven sons to Samuel. And God never spoke of any of them as the chosen one. So Samuel, still quite confused, said, Jesse, do you have any more sons? And he said, well, my youngest son, David, he's just a boy. He is in the field tending the sheep. Samuel said, well, go get him. We, were, we are not going to eat until he comes. So they sent for David and David comes. And when David arrived, the Lord spoke to Samuel and said, anoint him. He is the one. Can you imagine how confused they all were that this child, this young boy was going to be the chosen one to lead God's people as king? It had to have been very confusing, but Samuel obeyed God and he anointed David as king. Now we know, and we're going to remind you in the next few weeks about the incredible things that David did. Some are good, some were not so good, but he had a heart that was turned to God. Now, so our memory verse comes from this chapter, 1 Samuel 16 and verse 7. And it says, For the Lord sees not as man sees. Man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. So why did Israel, the people of God, choose Saul as king? Because he did, he looked like a king. He was tall and he was strong. But his heart, not good. So when God chose a king for Israel, he didn't care that he was a boy. He cared that his heart was righteous. And so God is not concerned with how we look on the outside. He cares about our heart and he has given us so many incredible gifts and when our heart is good and we're using our gifts and our um, our character traits to his glory then we are pleasing to God not just because we look good on the outside or we wear nice clothes or our hair looks good it's because our heart is good and so we're going to do a quick recap um, who 
was the servant of God that was told to fill that horn with oil and go anoint the chosen king. Samuel. What town did God tell Samuel to go to? Starts with a B. Bethlehem. Who was the man who had all the sons that he was to find? Jesse. Who was Jesse's youngest son that Samuel anointed as king? David. You are so smart, and I'm so thankful for you and um, how important it is for us to um, be together even though we can't come together. So I hope you have a great week, and um, we love you. Hi, I'm so glad that you're back with me. All right, let's go over our new memory verse. I hope you really enjoyed this story and then we're gonna get really silly with a new song. All right, let's go over it twice. For the Lord sees not as man sees. For man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. 1 Samuel 16, seven. All right, one more time. For the Lord sees not as man sees. For man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. 1 Samuel 16, 7. All right. When the Lord's looking at our heart, he's looking for things like the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. And so we're gonna sing a really fun song about it, but you gotta shake it all out and get really silly. Are y'all ready? All right, I want you to sing with me. The fruit of the Spirit's not a coconut. Fruit of the Spirit's not a coconut. If you wanna be a coconut, might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the Spirit, cause Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Good job! All right. Oh, the fruit of the Spirit's not a banana. The fruit of the Spirit's not a banana. If you want to be a banana, you might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the Spirit, because Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, spacious, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Good job, guys! All right, the fruit of the Spirit's not a watermelon. The fruit of the Spirit's not a watermelon. If you want to be a watermelon, you might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the Spirit because the Spirit is love, joy, peace, spacious, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, spacious, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Good job! Now let's think of a fruit. What about grapes? Grapes are always in bunches. If you've got a brother or sister, I want you to jump up next to them. I'll use my tree. Ready? The fruit of the Spirit's not a grape. The fruit of the Spirit's not a grape. If you want to be a Great, you might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the Spirit, cause Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. All right, guys. It was so good seeing y'all. And I hope that you enjoyed this. Whew, I'm tired of the love singing and dancing. Um, we're going to go to Miss uh, Miss Lisa and Tell now, and she's going to um, do your art project with you. And this one's really, really fun and really long, so make sure you got your pencils and paper and your um, markers ready to be able to do this. And moms and dads, there's going to be some cutting at the end, so um, I hope that y'all have a really great time with this. See y'all next week. Hey, guys. Um, so today's craft to go with our lesson is going to be a crown and our crown is um representing our heart and um, your 
Your Bible le uh, lesson, the Bible verse is for the Lord sees not as man sees. Man looks on the outward appearance, but Lord looks on the heart. And so what we're going to do is we're going to build a crown. And then we're going to put jewels on our crown. Each one of our jewels is going to represent one of the fruits of the Spirit. Because that's what we want to put on our heart, right? Are the different fruits of the Spirit. That's what God wants to see on our crown in our heart. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to build a crown. Right, so you're going to have two pieces to your crown. What you're going to do is you are going to draw different heights. Um, jagged lines. Okay. Then you're going to take your scissors and you are going to cut on those lines. I am not the best, as you can already tell, at cutting on lines. But we're going to do our best and we're going to keep both pieces. Now, the, both pieces will be way too big for your head, but one piece is not big enough for your head. So we will, um, your parents will help you measure and see what you need. Um, and then the back side of your crown will be the pieces where you see your pencil lines, okay? So when you're constructing this crown, you will put the pencil sizes, to pencil lines together. You may have to trim. Do you see how this one fits together? And then you will wrap it around later to put on your head, okay? But we're gonna leave these pieces out. This is my back side. Let's see, I'm gonna, like, I'm gonna put it back. I'm gonna put it back. Okay, so if you want to put back on yours, that's great. All right, so we're just going to set these aside, and now we're going to build jewels to go on our crown. Okay, so I'm just going to leave my crown right there. I'm going to, I think I'm going to get me a black pen. If you want a black pen, you can get a black pen, we'll get a marker. Um, so, what's the first first? fruit of the spirit. Love. So, you want love on your heart. You want love on your crown. So, what's the best shape? I've got a couple of different pieces of paper, depending on if I mess up, whatever. Um, what's the best shape for love? A heart. Good job, guys. So draw you a heart. So this heart is going to be one of your jewels. You may want a heart. I may want one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine hearts. I can choose to draw nine hearts. Or I can just cut one out and trace it. This is completely up to you. But I'm going to have... I'm not going to have nine. I've decided I'm going to do, I'm going to do three hearts. All right. So this represents love. So your hearts, these are your jewels that you're going to be coloring and cutting out and put, putting on your crown. Okay. Um, let's do a shape for joy. How many of you have joy on your heart? You're just a joyful person, a joyful child. When I think of joy, I think of bubbles. All right, so that's a circle. So we're going to do some circles. And I'm doing them a little bit smaller than my heart. Because what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to color these red. And then I may color these yellow because I think of joy being yellow and bright and sunshiny and I may glue it on top of my heart because some of these are going to be layered up. Joy and love to me really go well together. Now I'm going to do some big ones in case I want to put a different shape inside my joy. All right, peace. How many of you have a peaceful heart? Yes, 
Jesus and God, they love peace. Not not very much strife. They love peace. Um, let's do a teardrop shape for peace. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you're going to draw this kind of shape. I think of peace. Okay, so at my house, it's very peaceful when it rains. Um, I associate, I don't associate tears with peace, but I associate these droplets, like I've turned them upside down like they're water droplets. I didn't mean for these to touch each other because I got to color them and cut them out. Uh, excuse me. And you may want more, but there's so many different um, personalities here and so many different jewels you can be doing. We're just going to, I'm going to lay them out here. And if you're not a patient person, um, but you want to learn to be patient, add that jewel in. You'll probably have all of the fruits of the spirit in here because we all strive to have these fruits. So let's do patience. Let's choose a, I'm going to do a triangle for patience. So this is my, I might do really big because I think a teardrop inside of peace and patience, I think that'd be beautiful, right? And we need lots of jewels to go on here because these are representing bits and pieces of our heart and our attitude and our heart to go together. So we're just going to draw a few of these. All right. So let's do kindness. We're going to do kindness, and it's going to be a square. All right, so you're going to do kindness. You may want some big kindness. All right, so the reason I'm doing some big and some little is some of these may go inside of another shape, but then another shape may go inside of them, just depending. So I've got some kindness. So you want to move to another sheet of paper. Okay, so you've got your love and your joy and your peace and your kindness. Okay, so I'm gonna put these back here. We'll color and cut them out in a minute. Let's do goodness. All right, so goodness. This is going to be, let's do ovals. Let's do ovals. You could do different shapes size ovals. Oh, my oval is a little wonky. Um, do ovals for goodness. Good job, guys. Y'all are great at this. All right. Faith. Faithfulness. So faith. What would be a great shape for faith? Oh, let's do a diamond shape. All right. So that's the top of a triangle. And a bottom of a triangle. Can you do that? Let's do some a big one. A top of a triangle. And then doing a, the bottom as a triangle. Let's do some more. You could do them long and skinny. You can do them little and skinny. Right? Faith, that's great. Gentleness. I have this one student, and she is such a gentle spirit. She just, oh, she's wonderful. And so we're going to do gentleness as a rectangle. Yeah, wouldn't that be a beautiful? I can't wait to see how you put your, um, jewels together. So I gotta do some big ones. Remember, I do some big ones and some little ones and you're gonna create a pattern on here. You're gonna do these in different colors. I can't wait to see your crowns. All right, and then the last one is self-control. I think we all sometimes have a bit of problems with self-control and it's something we have to work on a whole lot. And that's okay, because that's how we grow and become who God wants us to be. All right, so we've done a circle. Oh, I know self-control. Let's do a star. All right, guys, I'm going to show you a really simple way to do a star. Okay, 
And what we will have to do is you will color the back side will have here. I'll show you. So we're going to go diagonal up and then straight down. A diagonal to the left, straight across, and then a diagonal down to the left and close it. So what I will do is I will um, color this one on the back side and then cut it out. So let's do that again. Self-control, because the star is a little harder and we have to work on self-control. We're going to do a star again. All right. So you're going up, diagonal to the right, straight down, diagonal to the left, straight across, and then diagonal to the bottom left. All right, let's do that again. Diagonal up, straight down, diagonal to the left, straight across, Diagonal down to the bottom left. Good job. So let's do a few more. Mine seem to keep getting bigger instead of anybody getting smaller. Good job. Guys, y'all did a magnificent job. Now, let's say I want to, I'm gonna do my star. So would I do my star in yellow? But my paper is yellow, so I might have to do my star maybe to make it look golden. So look, I'm going to flip my paper over. I can kind of see my star a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to outline it back here. So I can see what to color. All right, my other ones, I don't really have to do that, but I have to on my star, because I don't want all those lines in my star. I don't mind that outside ones being there. Okay, so because my paper is, sorry, because my paper is yellow, I am going to use more of an orangey yellow for my star. We'll just color them all. And look, don't you just love this that you don't have to stay in the lines because you're going to cut it out and nobody cares if you stayed in the lines. It's the best ever. Best, best ever. All right, so what you're going to do is you're going to color all your jewels now, okay? You're going to color all your jewels that you have on your heart that you're going to be putting on your crown. I just wanted to show you what it's going to do for the star. And, and then I'm going to outline it and give it just a little bit darker outline with this. You can use brown. You can use black. I'm just using a darker shade of orange, kind of like a burnt orange. So that when I put this on my, when I put it on, when I cut it out and put it on, they... It'll stand out. All right, so here's what you're going to do. You've got a lot of jewels to color and cut out. Once you get them all cut out, then you're going to arrange them on your crown. Glue them down. And then, um, so, wait, sorry, I was cutting out. I just had a brain. What you're going to do is you're going to put your crown together. Okay, so there's going to see how I have a little bit of overlapping with how I put that together. All right, so you can tape it or glue it or staple it. What it does is it gives you, see, remember we hit the back, gives you a, um, like a tab right here, this piece, this extra piece. And what it does when you put it in is it lines up right here with this extra piece. Anyway, so you're going to tape it and then your crown should fit. It might be a little bit big and he has to have it trimmed. It's okay. And then what you're going to do is you're going to glue all your different jewels onto your crown, right? 
So God looks at your heart and this is like the representation of your heart. Look at your, see, you're going to glue these forever all over. Um, I can't wait to see your crowns, but this is representing your heart and this is representing you. Things that you know you have that you want more of, more of these shapes of the fruits of the spirit. You're going to put everywhere. Ones that you need to work on may not have a whole bunch of them because you haven't put a whole bunch of that in your heart yet. But that's really up to you because you may want a whole bunch of the ones that you're working on to remind you. There's no wrong with this. There's just having a beautiful heart for God and Jesus. Guys, thank you so much for working with me today. I cannot wait to see your pictures with your crown on your head. Guys, you have a magnificent day and I will see y'all next week. Bye-bye.